Those who missed the Sky Show put on by the Northern Lights over Utah earlier this month may be in luck as they could return as soon as next week. Back on May 10th, the biggest geomagnetic storm to hit the planet in two decades produced perfect conditions for the Northern Lights to be seen across Utah. The phenomenon continued throughout that weekend, with Utahns gazing up and seeing the spectacular sights and sharing thousands of amazing photos. According to Live Science, the massive sunspot responsible for the May Northern Lights show is still around and will be facing the Earth during the new moon on June 6. It will align nicely, solar physicist Ryan French told Live Science. As soon as the sunspot starts to appear, we will enter the window of opportunity for solar flares. Live Science says when the giant sunspot, which is 15 times wider than Earth, moves into position to the right of the sun's center, it will be in the perfect place to send solar weather to our planet. Although the new moon rises on June 6, the report says to be on alert before and after the date in case conditions become optimal for another Northern Lights appearance. Many Utahns experienced the best views of the Northern Lights by moving away from larger cities. But even those who stayed in place where they were saw an incredible show in the night skies. A major solar storm erupted from the same sunspot that produced the mid-May auroras around the world. Could another Northern Lights show be coming soon? The sunspot cluster that illuminated the Chicago area's sky with the Aurora Borealis three weeks ago will return this weekend, but the prospect of seeing the northern lights in the city this time remains hazy. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration predicts a moderate geomagnetic storm in the northern hemisphere late Friday night and early Saturday, causing the Aurora Borealis to stretch farther south than usual again, possibly just reaching the edge of northern Illinois. The solar storm isn't expected to create as flashy of a display as the Aurora Borealis seen across the Chicago area three weeks ago. A Category G2, or moderate activity, storm watch was issued for this weekend. In early May, NOAA issued a G4 watch for severe activity, but the storm resulted in G5 levels, or extreme activity, which is the top of the scale, according to NOAA. It's not unusual for a sunspot cluster with the intense complexity of this one to maintain strength for weeks on end, said NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center spokesperson Erica CEI. The reason we're seeing a return of activity now is because the sunspot cluster responsible for the early May activity has rotated back into Earth view. The sun's rotation takes about 27 days. People around the world were given the opportunity to witness a dazzling display of the northern lights after the Earth was impacted by a historic geomagnetic storm starting Friday. This month, the sun produced the most intense geomagnetic storms in 20 years and northern lights as far south as the southern U.S. Now, active sun regions are facing Earth, putting Earth in the line of fire once again. Sunspot regions 3663 and 3664, which caused the G5, level geomagnetic storms in mid-May, are back but with new names as they emerge from the other side of the sun Old Region 3663 is now 3691, and Old Region 3664 is now 3697. On the other side of the sun, the areas were facing toward Mars, sending space weather toward the red planet. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center has been busy tracking activity in these regions, including a long-duration strong flare and associated coronal mass ejection prompting a geomagnetic storm watch through this weekend. Most sunspot groups don't last very long, Dahl said. We get small ones that show up, and then they go away because the magnetic field just isn't that strong or intensifies rather quickly. The larger groups, they tend to last well as the sun rotates. We see them, but they don't survive that rotation. Dahl said it's not surprising the group survived, but it is unusual they are still magnetically complex enough to produce X-class flares or strong radio blackouts earlier this week. The fact that it's still producing activity, at least the southern one, that is very rare, that it's done that, Dahl said. I'd say we're still in store for some great chances here for seeing the northern lights further south than usual. Over the next 12 days, these two areas will be closer to the middle of the sun, directly facing Earth. If a strong flare produces a coronal mass ejection, this is when Earth could see geomagnetic storm impacts like the intense northern lights experienced about May 10th. The G5, level geomagnetic storm watch, the highest on NOAA's space weather scale, issued by the SWPC in May, was the first since 2005. Dahl said it's too early to tell if we'll be seeing another G5 solar storm soon, but with the solar maximum of our star's 11-year cycle approaching, 
space weather will be very active into next year. We're just kind of getting near solar max, and we're not even there yet, necessarily. So yeah, this cycle is going to prove to be interesting, Dahl said. We could certainly see the potential for more G4 level storms. I can't say G5, though, because it's so rare, right? We don't have any new measure of confidence of saying that we may have another G5 to come, but it's certainly not outside the realm of possibility. Those hoping for another good show of Northern Lights should keep following the SWPC website for updates. Dahl explains that coronal mass ejections that cause the Northern Lights need favorable conditions for Earth to see aurora lights far from Earth's poles.